Hear ye, hear ye! The Parliament of Geek shall now come to order! And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, with another adventure in the Parliament of Geeks, where we ask all, where we ask media of all shapes, forms, and sizes one particular question: Be ye weeb or be ye scrub? I am I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have two of my good brothers. We have the we have. The ma the man who will st the man who will probably stenalize everybody, good brother Matty. Twice. And we ha <laughs> and we have the ma we have the man, best known as the metal dragon of the temple and the bane of my fucking existence. <laughs> I can't believe I had to explain that to Ethereal the other day. <laughs> good brother Xanatrix. It is once it is once again another t another time for the for the parliament as mentioned. It is good to be back with this. It is also good to be back with my normal setup since last time I had to use my laptop, which is not a deal breaker, but it's not ideal. That's why it's always called a plan B, folks. It's not ideal, but it but it is the bare minimum. Mhm. Mm but before we get into that, it is time to revisit our tradition once again. So ladies and gentlemen, it is time to rise for our drinking anthem. Skull! Skull! Motherfucker! Skull indeed. Some of you may be wondering why we didn't do the shout of Sound the Yallerhorn. I cannot get that level of loud, and because of those scheduling issues, it's a to it will be a toss-up for the foreseeable future when it comes to Good Brother Shades. It's uh, it's unfortunate, but it but it is what it is, and to qu to quote a to quote a great Brit, the show must go on. Yipper. Yeah, Speaking of show, for this one, we've up until up until this point, our our takes on the par on Parliament topics have been fairly unanimous. There hasn't really been a ba a bad entry thus far, something that we have critiqued ourselves, and something that while I am fully aware of. It's also some is also something that's a tricky situation because I don't feel 100% comfortable with subjecting everybody else willingly to bad shows, especially if especially if it goes over a certain length of episodes. But for this but for this particular case, it's something we've already been exposed to, so there's no reason to expose people to it twice. Because for this particular episode, we are covering a particular anime that will probably go down as one of the biggest disappointments and biggest blown opportunities in decades. Would I say that it's the that it's the anime equivalent to the invasion? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, having seen the invasion, as in the. WWF, WCW, ECW invasion. Uh, I, I still, jury, jury's still out. Yeah. The the only reason I don't go that far is that is I don't know if recency bias is take is taking into account. But the subject matter. That I that I have been rubbing my rhubarb for about phrasing <laughs> is you you know what you said the promised Neverland. Never is the key word here. 
Yeah, and, and for those scream, if scream, wanting to scream it, oh, let's get it out of the way now. You blew it. Yeah. Very well, that's very applicable. And revisiting my memories of both the anime and the manga is the reason why I can't even. I'm not even angry. I'm disappointed. Now, first off, I do. I there's been a whole lot of of stories as to why it ended up happening. Whether it be, uh, whether it be a rush job, whether it be the manga ending, so that so that so that they decided to j they decided to jump ahead a bit. I no one is ever going to know the full story until years. Um, down the road. Hell, a lot of us didn't know the behind-the-scenes bullshit when it came to Bleach until just a few years ago. I'm not going to get into that one either. Please don't, because there's a curiosity, and I feel like I, I, I want to go to bed tonight. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> yeah. But on a, on a, visual, on a visual level... The Promised Neverland started out fairly, fairly, fairly well promising. Um, it it's a beautiful setting, like the the in the first, uh, like it's it's a tale of two seasons in a sense. In the first season, beautiful and macabre at the same time. Um, you have the. It kind of remind. I think I said that. I think I said this when we were watching season one. It, I ended up getting a very Rob Rod Serling vibe, very Rod early Serling, animal, a little bit of Animal House, not too much of it, obviously, but mm -hmm. there is that there is that odd futuristic Animal House kind of feeling. Yeah. Now, I shouldn't. I should note that or uh, Animal Farm. Animal Farm or well. is. is or well. Yeah, is a be is a better is a better analogy. It's, a vi it's very Orwellian. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to I'm trying to nail down who who is responsible for the um, production of the an of the anime. Um, apparent apparently apparently a live action movie either exists or is in or is in production at the time of this recording. I haven't checked because we all know how this go how this goes when it comes to live action adaptations of anime. They're better in Japan. Not by much. I'm sorry. The Death Note, uh, Death Note live action adaptation movies in Japan are fantastic, dude. Yeah, that is like a, the, 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 the Japanese ones. I've seen both. I I would say if, if I could find a way to, 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 to get them, Parliament worthy. We've but we've been over this. Um, not the are, Netflix one though. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> we've been over this, but. The Death Note movies are more or less the exception. Um, yeah. There. Now, um, what I did find kind of interesting is, first off, this what this was not put on any of the usual um, programming blocks. This was put on the Noitamina um, programming block in Japan, which is a bit unusual for something that was published in Jump. Noitamina is. Basically, the art, basically an art block, art house um, block of animation in Japan. Yeah. So here, here's what we got on, on the stats here. Uh, Ma Mamoru Ka Kanbei uh, is obviously the, the music of Obata. So the studio is Cloverworks. Mm -hmm. Who are oh, I wonder, TV, really, uh, no one... mm -hmm. With uh, Adult Swim, with the Toonami pl plug and all that stuff. Yeah. All you had to do was say Cloverworks. Say no more, fam. Cloverworks tends to fuck everything up. Ooh, okay then. It's yeah, only think... recently, like very recently, with a couple of newer series that they've been doing well. Yeah, and um, Mamoru Kanbe, the di the director, I previously knew through Elf and Lead, even if that was way back in 2003. Ooh, you want to talk about a classic there, bud. The manga's even better, and it has a better ending. Mm -hmm. I have read the manga. You are not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and but folks, that's rails. Folks, Elf and Lean, the anime had a good ending. <laughs> this is not the, this is not the, not, not the shit on the anime. Manga, ma read the manga. Just, yeah. But, 
But um, as, rails, no, rails. As far as just to just to um just to skim through some of Co Cloverworth's previous works, um, slow start, which I haven't seen. Darling in the Franks, which was obviously, which was obviously a co-production. Boy, they didn't. No, have oh, out. no. Okay, Cloverworks is the entire reason the second half of Darling in the Franks is terrible, and also the entire reason Trigger removed Franks from their associated works page online. A1 Productions, Cloverworks, they still have Franks listed. Trigger, they're like, fuck you. We were only with the first half. We're out of here. Mm -hmm. Um. Bunny Girl Senpai, which I think Fantastic. Shades had covered. Um, it's it's good stuff. The Kaichi, haven't seen it. Um, Ace Attorney Season 2, haven't seen it. The final season of Fairy Tale, which was co-produced with A1 and Bridge, which was alright. Um, the Babylonia arc with Fate Grand Order, which gave, which gave us Good Guy Gilgamesh. Oh. That's an oxymoron, and you know it. <laughs> I put the good. In, I put the good in quotes. <laughs> Better than the alternative, Gilgamesh is what it should be called. Yeah. Oh, uh, Auto Boy Carl from Mobile Land. Um, no idea. No idea on that. Millionaire Detective Balance. Once again, no idea. Um, Super good. Mm -hmm. Fugo KG is fantastic. Yeah. Um. Horimiya, which at which I haven't seen. Wonder Egg Priority, which I've heard good things about. Which um, you probably also haven't heard the bad things about. Wonder Egg Priority has had good things in the early show. And then the later show fumbled the execution. Mm -hmm. Sound familiar? Yeah. Um Perfect. Shadows, ha Shadows House, which I remember here. I remember hearing blurbs about, but I didn't delve into it. Um, Tokyo Twenty Fourth Ward. Okay, I watched all of that. Um, it's a little bit rushed, but the premise is good. Mm -hmm. They only. I'll I'll take rushed but good, but over rushed but bad. Yeah. Like we've, I've seen plenty of Toku over Tokuris where we felt okay. That felt rushed, but it's like it's more of a nitpick. Mm -hmm. Um, my dress up darling, which obviously had the impact that it did. Um, my dress up darling is my best anime of that season. Yeah. So, uh, Akebi's sailor uniform, which I haven't seen. Spy Family, which is currently running and is fu and is fucking great. Mm -hmm. Um. In the heart of Kunoichi Subaki, which seen... I hear is also great. It's just cute ninja girls doing cute ninja girl things. Yeah, and Bochi the Rock, which I, which I haven't seen, but it can't be too terrible. It's based on a Yonkoma. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to point out that a lot of the things they mess up on, um, are earlier. Mm -hmm. it, like I said, very recently with with some some recent stuff, they've been doing very well. You touched upon them. My Dress Up Darling, Spy Family, Tokyo Twenty Fourth Ward. Mm -hmm. I have to wonder. I have to wonder if it's because they've they as time has gone on, they've been able to get a bit more freedom. That, or in the case of their collabs, like this other stuff they have with A One Pictures, they know how to better execute a collaborative picture of what they're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Now. That pr now, of course, Promise Neverland season one and two is in, is in there, and you know how you talked about Darling in the Franks getting get possibly getting act getting um axed from Trigger, not possibly, but they got at, but it got axed from Trigger's um list associate yeah associated works list. They don't have it listed there on purpose. Yeah, um, yeah. I season two. Is, he, I, I think that's where the the discussion is going to lead. Because again, now I, I, I'm going to say this right now. I'm probably going to say it when we get to the uh, the thing, the, mm -hmm. the, the when we, we we vote. This series is a tale of two seasons. It very much ultimately. It very much is, and it's also it's also a case of highly com highly um, compressing because yeah, the entirety of season one 
was two whole was two whole arcs in the in the manga. Um, the first three ep the first three episodes were the co constitute the introduction arc, and then there was the jailbreak arc. Um, yeah. Oh, but then again, some people consider the Black Swordsman arc to be a to be a full arc with Berserk, even though it's very it's very it almost feels like a backdoor pilot. <laughs> Let's put it this I mean, way. Go ahead. I was gonna say the 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 Black Swordsman arc of Berserk is based off of the pilot of Berserk, where Guts only had an eye patch and a and a and a, or the only differences were that Guts smiled more, had an eye patch and a ponytail. Mm -hmm. But. The the first season, I think, I think is what, and the events of it, I think, is what a lot of people were really drawn to. The introduction of our th of our three of our three um, protagonists, Emma, Ray, and Norman. And while it's very clear that the that um the focus in that in that trinity is Emma, it's not it's not like it was it's not like it was Goku syndrome where it's where it's one pre. It's one primary character and a bunch of jabronis. No, everyone feels like like uh, obviously the main trio has has main character status, but you and th this is something that, that that I think in season one they did fairly well was every one of the characters you saw on screen, no matter the amount of exposure to your screen, like uh, the the amount of time they had on your screen. You felt like, okay, this is a valuable person. Mm -hmm. This is something that you want. If someone's missing, you feel that tension. Yeah. And when it comes, and of course, of course, the other this is this is also where I was getting a lot of the Twilight Zone vibes because Twilight Zone, especially in the early Rod Serling era. Was had a very strong habit of introducing things that seem innocuous, but then there's an undercurrent that you start to see that um p that taints every innocuous thing that you're going to see afterwards from it. Or in, in some in cases, the layers sense, are it's pulled a back. Small thing that either is a good thing, and then you did it's a good thing that you keep, and in a weird twist, it's good, or it is the absolute opposite. So yeah, Rod Sterling get get the get, gets a shout out here because there is a lot of that, Inf if not that influence, but the 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 feeling of it for sure. Because in the first, it's especially in the first episode when you think, oh th yes, it's a little odd. You, you look, it's 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 literally the the setting. You're you're in a schoolhouse slash uh, orphanage, lots of land. You know, you have your recess. You are allowed to go out. There's food aplenty. You are treated like a child, but in a good way. You're allowed to have your childhood. You're allowed to do all of the things. Just go. Don't go beyond that wall, and you'll be fine. And of course, there, there's the education system, which is just a bunch of scanning and a whole lot of ooh, a lot of futuristic shit. But beyond that. You're allowed to be a kid. Mm -hmm. oh. Never mind the uniform. Never mind the uniform. Mm -hmm. or, or, or those strange neck tattoos. The fact that you're numbered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. I suppose I suppose the other um the other the other analogy I could make, and this is a, this is a bit of a not necessarily a deep cut, but not not far off. Did any of you ever see the film The Island? Oh God! Yes. It, ironically, it played over uh, at the French station over the weekend. You and McGregor, Sean Bean. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. Fate has a, has a twisted sense of irony. Monkey. Hey, it's a good code. reference it's, though, because it's, it's virtually the same thing. It's it's fate. It seems is not without a sense of irony. Ironic. Yep. There you go. But one of the but one of the things one of the things that was that I think helped establish season one early on, and 
I should note that I'm not that I'm trying to veer away from going through ev going through every single detail in the, in this particular case, and there's a reason for that I'll get to in a minute. But one of the things that I think appealed to myself and a lot of people was the chess game that was going that was going on, specifically oh, the chess game wanna... between the kids and Isabella. Yeah, here here's the thing, folks. You you go into this thinking. Oh, this is a lighthearted childhood romp, and then you go, "Oh, this is a horror movie." No, this this is a thriller. <laughs> At least the first season of it, uh, it, it's it's a thriller. It's the it's the thrill of the chess game that's going on between the kids trying who have obviously found out the ma the, the the recipe of soy of Soylent Green, and everyone gets that reference. You know what? As I guess, I, I, here's, here's the thing. Like, like I said, I'm going to tell people. I, I told people, forget season two. Just watch season one. There is no season two. Just like there are no episodes it, of Death Note past twenty five. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And the other the other thing that is that is all that is all the more important that is all the more important. When it comes to the, when it comes to this core trinity is, well, it's not necessarily id ego super ego like you might see in original series Trek or, or the core three of the Avengers. You do have three different perspectives, and neither one well, neither I... one of them is is outright wrong in terms of the method. You have Emma, the eternal optimist. Yeah. You have Ray, who's a, who's a bit who is a re, a realist with a bit of a pessimistic side, and you ha, and you have you have Gray who's trying to be, who's trying to be the middle ground at first, but is also smart as hell and you can't teach that, mm -hmm. and and that's the thing, and that, and all three of them have a balance with each other. Did you just say Ray twice, Monk? I feel like you didn't say Norman on that Nor last one. It was um, Norman. Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't be one of these without me fucking up somebody's name. Because you said Ray Ray was the the realist with some pessimism, and then you said Ray was the balance. I'm like, yeah. no, you mean Norman? Yeah, I meant. Yeah, like it, like I said. It begins. <laughs> yeah, I walked into that. Hey, I could have gone with a rake, but you know what? Sometimes you just gotta go with it. Mm-hmm. Uh. I'm not even that drunk yet. yet I'm not even drinking. <laughs> but the and it admitted admittedly the only the only real problem that I had wasn't really a problem but more of a pet peeve of the whole the whole um the whole um chained trap card as I call it. Your trap card activated my trap card that activated my trap card. So just like domino any normal Yu-Gi-Oh game, domino right? effect. Mm -hmm. Just like any normal Yu-Gi-Oh game, got it? <laughs> just say domino effect. It makes more sense. Actually, you know, in some cases, but, I'd I'd say um, Xanatos Gambit might work a little bit better. Uh, no, well, either, see, way, either way works. At, at this at this point, Monk, the proper trope would be Xanatos Chess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. The thing with the thing with all of it is that you don't you don't have an outright um easy to hate villain in this kind in this kind of story. While Isabella was was the villain quote unquote in in season 1 and in the first two arcs of the manga, it's not it um it isn't a case of evil but ra but at worst or best um, lesser evil, because I her think, life is just as much on the line as everybody as the kids are. I think the I think the best uh, the best way to put it is that this is the point where, having accepted evil in, she has no choice but to deal with it in the best terms she practically can. Mm -hmm. And. Even all all the all the worse when all the worse when there's the revelation that Re, that Ray is her son. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and one of the themes is supposed to be family, and we will get to that in a minute. I and uh, no, I'm not. No, for what for the record, no, I don't have the family button from Fast and Furious. I would kill myself before I do that gag. Well, at least you at least you show up at least you show up on time, which is more than can be said for Vin Diesel apparently. Eh. <laughs> Folks, there's a reason the Rock hates his balls. <laughs> oh, but then we got then we got to season two, and the funny thing is, when it comes to season two, a lot of people would it would it's very easy to say, oh, season two is where everything is where everything fell apart, but. The first half of season two, if you look at it on its own and you don't consider the manga, isn't too terrible. The yeah, and that's the crazy part. The first half of, of that second season, it's going at a pace where you think, you know, if this is the arc for the rest of the season, I'd like. And the second half would be like all stretch shots of season three. I'd probably be more forgiving. We have we had the whole thing at first with the with the with the forest and the and chasing Minerva's um, trail. We ended up we ended up meeting two demons who do not need to eat humans, who who and who almost have and who almost have a I guess re, I guess religious like attitude about about themselves. Um, I'm not I'm not going to call them monks. <laughs> I mean, you could still stick with the shtick. You could. Yeah, but part of me doesn't want to give it the satisfaction. Um, although, with although with um, with um, Sanju, one one of them, the tall the tall boy among them, there's still the implication that he still wants to um, eat that he still wants to eat humans. But it's, even but though it, he doesn't have to, yeah. Mm -hmm. He hasn't but, had known a world without the necessity for it. Yeah. But the but at, but the point is is that we're starting to get more of a perspective of the of the world that um the that the Grace Farms were in. Mm -hmm. And you know, just just expanding things and tr and trying to reset the board, as I often say. Yeah. Um. Even go even going so far as seeing that seeing that human village, and this is where things started to re started to fall apart. Because we have we have the introduction of the human village. We have the re we have the reintroduction of Norman. We had the whole thing with the with the bunker, um, and the exploration of. Of Miner of who Minerva who Minerva is, as well as his brother. All all and all, all culminating in a rant in a random collection of scenes that that le that lead up to an ending that everybody hated. Everybody was like, "What the fuck was that?" Because. In that second half, they start rushing through whole arcs in the span of a few episodes, and go and trimming a trimming a whole lot of fat in order to ha in order to be a handful of episodes is nothing new. But in cooking, a lot of people, especially a lot of chefs, a lot of people, even even, even the shitty ones, will tell you, fat is flavor, mm -hmm. and it's okay to trim. In some recipes, you have to trim some fat because you don't want it to have just fat. But if you trim too much, something 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 can dry up. So and then there goes a flavor. I'm sure we've all dealt with that one person who thought that you need to squeeze out all the juices when making a burger. Yeah, and then you got a dry piece of shit. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about it. Fortunately, that fortunately that mindset seems to have gone the way of the dodo these days. Thank God. Yeah. 
No, but, I'm not gonna go full medium rare on a burger a burger burger myself, but I know there's a temperature thing. Yeah, this is kind. Of, why does that analogy work with with Promise Neverland? Again, going back to if they had just stick the first half of season two as just it's standalone season, go to whole 12, 13 episodes, whatever, right? And then the second half of season two as a season three stretched out, give it enough time, and then you could put in some stuff that probably would have helped make it even better. You, you're probably looking at a, a better show. Mm-hmm. What I do find, what I do find kind of interesting is season two actually had less episodes. Yeah, season one only had twelve, which is pretty standard fare these days, and especially standard fare for something that would be on the Noitamina block. Mm-hmm. Yeah, season- a lot, I think a lot. I'm not the big anime dude. I know some some cookie cutter anime could go all the way to a whole year. And then some go twenty episodes, some of them thirteen, twenty to thir- thirteen or twelve. 12, Obviously, Promise Neverland is, thir- is, is twelve. Yeah. Twelve and twenty-six are the ma- are the magic numbers. Usually, oh, there's all there's always exceptions to rules, like Gundam. Mm-hmm. Much, hey, like, much, like how, much like how the OG with, anyway. Yeah, much like how with um, Common Rider. 52 is the is the magic number. A full year of Common Raider. Mm-hmm. Full year of Super Sentai. Yep. Yeah. When it's some good shit, that's my jam. But now the now um as far as as far as whether or not I one argument that I've heard as far as why season two had less episodes was because of the. <clears throat> Unspecified virus of unknown origin. Just call it fucking malware, for God's <laughs> sake. That's what Nash does. Human malware. Yeah, but I can't. I I don't necessarily buy that. Buy that argument. I'm a, I, can... I subscribe. And this is something to a lot akin to a lot of media. I subscribe to the fact that it's not. The reason, but it is a reason. It is the reason season two got delayed. Yeah, but, there's no denying that. But as far as it's the reason why why there are only eleven episodes instead of twelve, that I call into question. Yeah, that that's why I'm thinking this is more of a there. There's more to it, but I'm willing to bet it. It's part of the com- combination. Mm-hmm. And. To be and when it comes to when it came when it came to it like it like I said the there were several there were some er, there were some arcs that were resolved in the span of a single episode and there were a and there were a lot of arcs even up until even up until the midway point of season two that got cut which which I will be getting into shortly and even even with all of that the the o- the one thing that I will not the one thing that I will not harp on is the animation quality, which across the board solid, beautiful. Yeah, Th- this... and that's almost never the issue with with CloverWorks animes. Hmm. Even all the way back to Frank's, the animation was top notch. Of course, they were beautiful. also working with beautiful with to A1. look at, smooth. Except for, yeah, but then again, anime is, is kind of like you you know there's going to be some jankiness here and there but they play it into as it's usually played into some scenes or whatever smooth Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. generally smooth yeah the clover works on the animation side of things has always been pretty steady it's execution where the projects that have issues have their issues yeah and this Especially when it comes to the source material they're working with, this is this the manga is a very expressive manga. Uh, just in just in general, when it comes to the visual identity, especially when it comes to character expressions, a lot of the really good ones that you saw in the anime are carried are carried over in the manga. And again, ri- again, visual design is vi- visual design and 
even audio design is is really good. Once again, audio design. I actually watched the uh, the first season of Promise Neverland is on the, the uh, on that streaming service that's losing a shitload of money in the stock lo- stock market. Mm-hmm. And I watched it subbed and audio design from like the voice acting perspective. Awesome on both ends, hmm. both sub and dub. Yeah. Now, with it, but with but one of the things that we started to, that we started to see less of is in in season two is the chess match. The only, I'd say I'd say during season two, the only thing that we that came close to the chess match was the. Moral dilemma about more about um, Norman's plan to to commit demon genocide. Yeah, Norman went off as a rocker and in season two. The big the big problem with with um with what Nor- with Norman's presentation in that is the fact that. We don't get we don't get the full details as to what exactly ha- as to what exactly happened. It's a case of telling instead of showing. Yeah, it's implied, told that it happened, but it's not general. It's 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 where it uh, lost a lot of luster. Mm-hmm. And to that to that end. I remember I do remember when I I do remember when I when I went when I went when we went through the anime and we went to that ending which was which was a very we ran out of time so we'll, so we'll just put this kind of thing in um, they it's literally the last two episodes was a lightning round mhm like and they got and they got that a happy ending and then it's like you're you're happy that they got a happy ending you're, you're happy the characters you know did what what happened to them did the narrative earn the happy ending? Fuck no, no. And empty, I, I like the, akin to the words or terminology of empty satisfaction. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, it hits the spot, but you're kind of feeling why? Where were we? The I, I feel I feel like I'm missing something. Mm-hmm. Now. A lot of people, of co- a lot of people, of course, reacted poorly and almost went through the seven stages of grief when it came to the when it came to this ending. Um, but a lot of people were asking why, and a lot of people were positing different th- different theories. And I have seen I have seen the theories run the gamut all over the fucking place when I was doing my research. Some were sa- some were saying that it got thrown under the bus when the when the manga announced its ending. Shortly after season two had come out, where they were like, "Well, we don't need to, pr- to use this anime to promote the manga anymore, so wrap it up," which I can be- I can believe. Some say that th- some say that the writer was screwed over by the publisher, which is which is possible. Um, some some say that it that it was a case of um, of in- of interference, or that th- or that the or that they got sc- they got more screwed over by the pandemic than people had thought. All of all of these are all of these are cases of I could see it happening, but what what the telling part about the fact that th- that these theories were all over the place is the fact that they that nobody had any real ground. They were just doing blind speculation, throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. Don't you love it? The sarcasm is palpable. <laughs> and I distinctly remember when we were going through this on the Tsunami Watch Party. Yeah. That I, I had I had said, I'm going to I'm going to take a look at the manga and I'm going to i I'm going to see if if it did at least a marginally better job. In the words of Thanos, reality is often disappointing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, is is the way the manga ended worse? Debatable. It's eh. a case of would you rather have a slow poisoning or would you ra- or would you rather have a quick death? 
It's all about how fast. (laughs) It's all about how fast I introduce the lead poisoning to you people. Do I put the lead in your morning coffee every morning and you die slowly from heavy metal poisoning, or do I introduce the lead to you at 1,300 feet per second? You tell me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Now, I will say I will say that the I will say that the that when it comes to what annoys me more, um, the manga does because up until a certain point, I would have been willing to say I would I was actively considering putting this on the same pedestal that I did Full Metal Alchemist. That's saying something. In the yeah. in those early moments, I want you to let that sink in that I was that I was that high on this on this on the on the manga in its early volumes like i said that's saying something and 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 then, and then season 2 happened and then yeah so i do so i do want to take some time to ex, to explore what got what got passed over and what got screwed up and and how the manga was not much better now the first two arcs, the introduction and jailbreak, those are largely the same. There's a few details here and th- here and there that are that are given more time, but you've got more time when you're doing a manga, so pretty pretty standard. Promised yep. Forest um, doesn't ch- doesn't change. There's not that much that um, cha- that changes. Um, the s- Search for Minerva is where one of the big changes comes, because the bunker that the, the bunker that they found, Shelter B zero six thirty two. That initi- when they f- when that bunker was used in the anime, it was largely empty. In the manga, it was not empty. It was occupied mm. by a, by a man who would ser- who would serve as. An ant- who would serve as a antagonist, a human who was re- was very much had very much fallen from hi- from his former optimisms, a man who for the longest time was known as Mister. And you'd think, okay, this guy this guy is going to be the is going to be the antagonist. Um, for whatever reason, Mister was completely cut out of the of the anime, and. Ooh. It was to give more time to the ending, don't you know? Mm. <laughs> now, if it's sounds- hold on, hold on, hold on, we 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 got the appropriate appropriate button here. <laughs> now, <laughs> Mister, the other, I guess, part of the reason that they decided to cut him is because he because he is crucial to setting up the next arc. That was in the manga that was not in the anime, and this is what and this is a very fatal blow that this was not in there. This I'm referring to the Goldie Pond arc. Now, we remember how Gracefield was essentially a farm for high for high quality food for demons. It's like it's like a veal farm, except using humans. Goldie Pond is is where we get introduced to the poachers, and 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 Goldie Pond basically being their hunting ground. They don't they don't hunt de- they don't hunt humans for the purposes of satiating hunger. They do it for sport, and. This is, and there was one. There was one character who got in, who, who got introduced, who got introduced in this particular arc, that was that would be particularly infamous, and that being Lewis, who ended up taking out a couple of the children, it um during this arc, and the sole reason for that is to get is, because he he wants a proper challenge against a, against a human. And he figures by getting Emma to hate him, he would get that challenge. The Goldie the Goldie Pond arc is probably the best arc of the manga. Ooh, and you cut that off. That's that must have pissed off some people. Um, no, 
I was I was certainly peeved when uh, when you have such a fascinating case of the case of these pe of these people being the chased a reversal of the chess game, where in the past you had the, you had the participants of the chess game in relatively equal footing. This case you have the heroes on the defensive end of the chess match. To the point you could say it wasn't really the chess match anymore. No. Um, and late in, late into late into that you there's the introduction of a character who is just referred to as Scratches because his name isn't outright given. It's just a bunch of characters that are intelligible. Thank and, you, Scratches. Yeah. And apparent apparent. And the whole thing of you have, of making a new promise, and you have two years to find the actual door to where he to where he is, with the only clue that it's ev that it's everywhere and nowhere. And this is where we get to to some of the problems, because two years, and in between arcs, they do a time skip of one year and seven months. Now, FUCKING BULLSHIT! <laughs> I am very mixed on the subject of time skips in stories. Because whenever you do a time skip, you are effectively resetting the board. It doesn't matter whether it's a time skip of a few months or a few years. The ideal time to do it is after some major event to... Give things time to breathe, times to reset the board and assemble all the pieces again. And there's plenty of sh there's plenty of shonen battle manga that have d that have done this. And hell, One Piece is One Piece did it um, with that whole three year time gap. Ooh. It's effectively a soft re it's a soft reset, and I don't like using that term, but it does apply here. Promise Neverland's time jump is an ex is an exercise in what not to do, because it's very clear that there's been a lot of development in that time skip, even though nobody's been able to find the door in that amount of time. But it's never outright shown. It's just treated as if they're still as if they're still searching. It hasn't had any detriment hasn't had any um strain on them. And when 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 a time skip jumps over positive character growth or even like negative character interactions that lead to character development, and it's instead just implied after the after the skip, that is a bad time skip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now the now the um, Kuvitadalia arc, which is this one, I consider to be the beginning of the end in a sense because in term in terms of the in terms of the slow downturn first off because of because of the time jump but also in the, in the midst of that a character like Mister whose real name is is in, at this point is revealed to be Yugo um ends up ends up doing a full face turn as if he, as if he's gone through a lot of development in that time but we don't get this chance to see it. Like I said, by skipping the character development, you've done yourself a disservice. You done goofed. Mm -hmm. Now, you do have the whole thing of the shelter of the shelter getting of the shelter getting ambushed and them having to relocate, which is a case, which is a classic case of escalating the stakes. But. The big problem that starts to happen, and it, and it only gets worse, which is why, again, this is the canary in the coal mine, is that you don't have the lo you don't have a logical progression of events. Things just happen as the plot demands, as if the as if um all the characters are chess pieces. Now so, the world is reacting to the people instead of the people reacting to the world. Yeah. Bad story railroading. Now, then we then comes the King of Paradise arc, which is where the reunion with um, Norman happens, and where he unveils his plan to to do his whole demon extermination. Now, it did 
it did go into the fact that Norman did not have did not have the best of did not have the best of times in the place that he got sent off to. Um because what end he got sent to a different farm that was more of a experiment experimental farm. A place that was trying to accelerate the process to create high to create high quality food. A oh, veal factory farm. Mm hmm And uh, and some of the experiments that were done on hi on him and the me and the members of his faction accelerated their growth, but left them with defects. So what? And this was something that was brought up in season two, but again, but again, you had. The the time skip wasn't brought up. Character characters like Mister and everybody in the Goldie Goldie Pond thing wasn't brought up. So you just have the you just have the same three characters. Well, the, well, two of the three characters acting the way that they did right at the start. Not a whole lot of change. No character development. And this. What what makes things it what makes things even worse is the fact that up is that as at this point and further on, Emma is challenged less and less, and it becomes more more about her her having this belief of wanting this of wanting to save everyone, and then the and then the and then things just happen to go down in a way that ends up working. It starts to get more and more contrived. Is it just me, or or is the monk is the monk a Cylon, Maddie? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit there, monk. Oh god damn it, not again! How's it? How is it now? Nah, still Cylon. Yeah, getting better, but still Cyloning. Yeah, I've been having this. I've been having this issue with Discord for the last few days. And it's not like my it's not like my ping is all fucked up, but for some reason the it keeps showing red. Sorry about that, folks. My 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 packet loss on Discord decided to fuck with me again. But getting back getting back to the matter at hand, the the. The next arc when it is was the set was the um was the seven walls where the, where there's where they decide to open up the, open up the um the or not open up but utilize the Chekhov's gun of of you of um well what what about San, what about Sanju and Mo, and Mujika they don't need they don't need to eat humans mm -hmm. um and you one would th one would think that the that the chess match is now is now Emma's optimism versus Norman's desi desire for extermination but once again the the problem is in order to have a chess match you need to have either two sides on equal footing or one side on the defensive mhm mm and if you're going to have one side on the defensive you can't ha you can't have it be the um, baby face in this case. Yeah, yeah. It can't be strictly baby face versus baby face. Yeah, you have someone who needs to wear black in that match. Uh -huh. Or in the, or in this case, if you're gonna have if if you're going to have the baby face be dominant, that's a squash match. Nobody does a squash match for thirty for thirty minutes. No squash matches, folks. Three minutes tops. Five minutes if you really want to play with your food. But mm -hmm. three minutes should be enough. Yeah. Um. Uh, but then but um and admittedly, a lot of the arcs a, a lot of the arcs after for the latter half start to run together in my mind because because we end up go we end up going into a vicious cycle of 
of the of you can't you can't say you you can't save them. Yes, I can. Emma going. Yes, I can. And things just happening to play out in the way that the way that she the way that um, reinforced her beliefs. It essentially went from characters reacting to the world to the world reacting to characters. And now we're getting to the point of near Mary Sue levels of plot armor. Yeah. And with with uh, with uh, some of the flaws that uh, that Emma had you, going full Mary uh, Mary Sue is bad. And the Imperial Capital Battle and the return and the return to Grace Field arcs. Um, try try and try and do a bit a bit more of the world expansion that I wanted early on, but because of how it's essentially been tainted by the by turning it into the Emma show you it they don't they don't register they don't register as well and you have the issue of it's hard to it's hard to really get this when you put all that when you put all that focus on one character like that it while at the same time trying to have an ensemble cast Everybody else just feels like jobbers, or oh, the, or the or you're not able to get the same connection that Emma is supposed to have. Yeah, N- not only that, but going back to the world building for a second, um, if you're going to expand the world, it has to be done before you hit the final climax of your story. Either that, or when you are expanding the world after you've hit the rising action hit the climax and are on the last stages of the of the hero's journey to the hero's return to normalcy that's where you explore how the world was changed by the actions of the hero we can see that in the in the uh, return to the shire in lord of the rings Mm -hmm. um it's you can't the, the world can't be the same when you are going back as much as the hero has been transformed so has the world and there's none of that you're there's not absolutely fucking you just none went, of that you just went straight to the end instead of saying uh, instead of spending you know what fucking a whole season explaining okay what happened to this world and what and what's the, even more these cho- of these children escaping and trying to fundamentally change that world. What's even What's even worse? It and this is this was what re- this was what really offended me as a writer. And the thing is, when, whenever I get offended with something, it is ne- it is always be- it is always because of I ha- because I have I have sense as some degree of a writer. I I like to use the Seinfeld clip of and this offends you as a Jewish person. No, it offends me as a comedian. <laughs> oh, I don't have I don't have the sound bite for for that. So I, I like, don't either, but it works. Because you remember how you remember how I said that Norman's faction ha- absolutely hates demons for what they did to them. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, as the story goes on, they that that particular challenge is dropped. Um. They are. It is even confronted or, or or fucking resolved. It's oh, it's just fixed. The whole, it's just I hate fixed. the. I hate. Nope. I hate demons. I won't be able to forgive them. But I'm gonna go along with your plan. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just fixed. It's it's not. It's not. Oh well, we need to get to the root of this and show you that not all demons are bad, and you know some can be reconciled. Yeah, we skipped the route that made them think. Fuck all the mo- fuck all the demons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. And you also have you also have Lewis showing up. Who you remember that? You remember his whole mo that I mentioned in the Goldie Pond arc? Yep. Completely gone. Now he now he's now he's what now he's all of a sudden a good guy. Sure. This just this just. This just does not make any fucking sense. No, but one of the things that was that re- that really annoyed me is in in one in um chapter 1 in chapter 177 um in one of in 
in um in one of the ba in one of the battles at um Grace Field House. Isabella gets stab gets gets impaled by a demon. And it's very and you end up going through a de through a death scene with everybody crying, but the person who she who she spends the most time speaking to is Emma. Not her fucking son, which, you know, was a point of anguish and agony early on for both her and Ray. That was, like, legitimately a, a traumatizing and traumatized part of their characters. Mm -hmm. Um, but... No, 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 it's it's all, it's the Emma show again. Like I said, Mary Sue levels of plot armor and stupid at this point. I know some people get defensive on whether or not a character is a Mary Sue, and there are many, tell, there are many interpretations of what a Mary Sue is, but a key thing for me, and a key breaking point for me when it comes to characters, whether they be Mary Sue or Gary Stews, is when that character is not adequately challenged. She was in season one and two. It's as if they saw the challenge and went, nope, let's go straight to the happy ending. Yeah. It, 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 in layman's terms, that's exactly what they did. They saw the challenge and went, nah, you're not tuning in for it. You're here for the happy ending. You want to see the kids survive, do you? I'm like, yeah, but we, we yeah, yeah, they're, they're, we're, you need an antagonist other than the threat of antagonism. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end of Grace Field, um, Emma does end up meeting up with Mister, who, and and you have this whole scene of um, of a new promise being made, but the cost is um, her is the memories of her family, which you would you would think that you think okay, that's a great coda. We can go we can go into an epilogue where she does where she doesn't remember them. It's li it's a literal case of. Emma died for for the for the rest to live without her actually dying. Yeah, except except even that can't be done properly because the final arc, the human world arc, which is basically an epilogue. Somehow they somehow they're able to find her, even though even though all of their tat even though all of their um, serial serial number tattoos are gone, and. Even though she doesn't remember them, she feels like she was supposed to meet them, and it's treated as if it's a pro as if it's a proper reunion. Which again, the, it's a case of antagonism and threat skipped for the for the sake of a happy ending for the sake of a happy ending. A happy ending is not a happy ending is nothing if it is not earned. Yep. And let's let's just um, mark once again how this is not just the world moving or re reacting to the characters. This is literally the world moving around Emma, and that's that's the biggest hallmark of a Mary Sue or a Gary Stew mm -hmm. that the world bends around them to suit the needs of the character. This it's also for this reason that I do not buy, I do not buy the claim that th that there was some sort of screw over or some sort of demand to wrap, to wrap things up, and that's the reason why I spent so much time talking about the Kuva Tadalia arc because that was that was smack dab in the middle of the story, and. That was where we started to see the problems, as someone else had pointed. the The game went the game went on easy mode, and I no, want to no, no monk. The, the game went on games journalist mode at this point. True. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair. But my point in bringing that up is to is to make clear the fact that. This isn't when it came to the manga. It isn't a case of oh, they just fumbled it at the last few chapters, which can happen in manga. No, this was a slow descent into problems, and problems of the writer's own making, as far as I'm concerned. Is it possible that there were a bunch of details in the original script that got that got that got cut around? Obviously, the cutting room floor is always is always thick in these kind of things. But 
if it was just the last arc of that shit the bed, I probably would be a little more forgiving. No, it's the it's the fact it's the fact that the problems slowly crept in like that. Yeah. And in and what I I won't I'm not gonna go And the thing that the thing that makes it all all the worse is is putting expect I'd say it's better I'd say it's better to have no expectations than to have expect than to set up expectations because I feel like that's what was done and for whatever reason the writer was not able to sustain that sounds to me like you're ready to get to that vote though <laughs> Cause, cause yeah yeah because <laughs> yeah, at this point it sounds like what well, we're we're rounding up to the point where okay, someone was got sick of doing the one story, wanted to do something else. Mm-hmm. So with that said, I think I think it's time that we cast our lots. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen of the gallery, dear brothers and sisters that may be watching among them, and of course. Our, well, our brothers here amongst the Parliament. It is time! To you I turn first, Maddie. Be it weeb or scrub! As I mentioned several times at the, at the beginning, this was the story of two separate shows, two separate seasons. Had the promised Neverland stopped at the first season the, the the kids escaped have escaped and they are gone they're free in the wind and that was it you would have left them wanting more of course but it was a, it was a good ending it was a feel good ending for a thriller and the second season started well but as many of people would say, the ending is, is everything. Watch the first season; it's worth a watch. Beyond that, scrub. All right, brother Maddie has cast a vote of scrub to the promised Nether Neverland. Ugh. I can't even say it right. You'll get there, bud. You'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> Monk, your verdict: weeb or scrub? Icarus is one of the is one of the great tragedies of one of many in Greek literature and one that is applicable here. A man a man with wings mate with wings held together by wax trying to fly to the sun to try and fly into the territory of the gods. His wings are melted and he falls to and he falls back to the earth. This was a, this was a story that a, that aimed for that aimed for the highest of highs with its chess match style of storytelling. But its but its writer clearly could not sustain that at the level at the level that was asked of him. There are many there are many possibilities as to why this this was a thing. But for whatever reason it happened, the fact of the matter is it still happened. And if the manga is any indication, I think it it's very it's very clear that I think he needed somebody to help him as a as a writer because he wasn't able to maintain that um that chess match in favor in favor of a protagonist like storytelling, which this was never set up to be. He tried tur he tried turning it into something that it was not designed to be from the get go. And much in the same way that gra that great art cannot save a bad co cannot save a bad comic, great art cannot save a bad manga. And it is with a heavy heart that I decree both the anime and the season the anime and the manga as a whole list that I am to be scrub. All right, the monk has declared that the promised Neverland. As a franchise, is Scrub. 
As for myself, there are many things that were set up in the early parts of the manga and the anime that propped it for greater heights. As the monk mentioned, the attempt to fly to the gods. There were strong supporting cast members and a core ensemble who lifted each other up in their weaknesses and played to each other's strengths. This allowed their antagonists to be just as wily and just as insidious in their own ways. But because... For whatever reason, whether the writer was no longer up to task, or whether there was a rush, we don't know the story. The antagonists started to become one note, or one dimensional. The overarching tete-a-tete, the head-to-head -head between these powers, began to also become shallow. To the point... Good one. Thank you. Because of this, the world stopped being a factor that the characters reacted to, which is how good heroes work. They work within the mechanics of the world. Instead, it necessitated two changes that were the downfall. You had to distill all of the heroism to a singular focal point. In this case, Emma. And you had to start to change the world so its mechanics worked around her. Because that started the process, it was an inevitable series of consequences that led to the ultimate failure of the manga and... In the case of the anime, it was the rush to get to the conclusion that cheapened everything and did not give enough time for setup or payoff. Despite fantastic art, despite a very good OST that has a very solid identity, as we always mention, musical identity is a good thing. And despite the fact that there was promise. Unfortunately, the promised Neverland broke its promise. Therefore, I too declare the entire franchise to be Scrub. And with votes of three Scrub and no Weeb, it is with a heavy heart, but one full of our duty that the Parliament announces the promised Neverland to be scrub. There are lessons to be learned, and we hope that those of you who have been listening can learn them. And again, first season's good. Mm -hmm. This is the rest of it. The rest of the medium is unfortunate. As it good as it is, I'm a practitioner of holism. Yeah. And even, the, even though we have listed it as Scrub, I do not want to make it seem like it is without merit. Because as my, men as my mentor once said, the best, the best way to learn from life's pitfalls is to watch other people fall in them. In the spirit of that, I do sincerely think that people should should expose themselves to the promised neverland as painful as it as painful as it is to watch good potential go to waste i say this because it's a good because it's a good me it's a good measuring stick of what not to do with certain aspects what not to do if you're trying to do a chess match style of storytelling what not to do when you're trying to do an ensemble style of casting and what not and what not to do when it comes to the setup and the follow through much in the same much in the same way that pe that people utilize 
the certain infamous crap coming out coming out of the unholy quartet to you to use as a teaching tool promise neverland should be treated in the same way as i stated there are lessons to be learned we hope those of you learn them and just because potential was squandered does not mean that you cannot still use the lessons of the potential itself as inspiration as well there's a lot of great stuff it, it, to be found in, in, in the scrubness to be fair and again a lot of hard work went into it it's beautiful to look at so w the recommendation is still to watch is just be aware that it's it's not always it's not all gonna wind up pretty but that concludes this particular meeting of the Parliament. We will be back in about a, in about a couple of weeks with something that gives us a little bit less pain. I can assure you all of that. You could even say we're insensitive to the pain. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Good one. <laughs> You'll, you, you folks at home, you, you'll get it in a couple of weeks. You'll, you'll, yeah, you'll, you'll get it. You'll get it. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay frosty, everybody. <laughs>